thing that I sent. Okay. Uh, uh, unfortunately, okay, let me see. Let me see what can happen. Let me maybe was my phone is off, 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 off. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Eugene, are you having the screen um, open there for us? No, no, no. I, I'm just trying to sort out this thing of the question paper first. All right. I'm just trying to send our colleagues. I think there are some colleagues who are in different groups who haven't received that document. So just give me a minute or two. Okay, let me try to open my laptop uh, WhatsApp whilst I so whilst I'm opening it, then we'll start. Uh, we can be in the meantime, we can start as it opens. All right, my friends, uh, I gave you the um, document on standard costing and asked you to read on standard costing a uh, long back. So my main explanations will be through the question. My main explanations will be through the questions, although I go through some of the um, explanations as we go. Right. Uh, let me just. Right. Uh, first of all, I would start by uh, describing the control process. Right. Uh, management are responsible for, if those who have done management, you know that they are responsible for planning, organizing, leading, uh, and controlling the activities of the organization in a way uh, that will enable the organization to achieve its objectives. So the aim is to make sure that the objectives of the organization uh, are achieved. All right. So I would look at a summary of the control process. All right. The first thing that is to happen in the control process is that we set standards. All right. And these standards will be used to create the budget. It can be the main budget or it can be flexed budgets. They will be created from the standards. Actually, the standards is um, what we normally, the, the performance is that we normally expect. Um, right, that means if we are optima operating optimally according to expectations, what are the standards that are expected? So that is the what? Right, let me just, I think my, my WhatsApp is open now. Thank you guys. We have forwarded this. Let me just forward to our other guys that are struggling. All right.
in Right, is there anyone who does not have it? I think now it has been sent to all groups. Right. Oh, sorry, over here, Mama. So, uh, right. So we're saying the first thing that is to happen, we have to set the standards. These are the expected. It can be the materials that, let's say, you are manufacturing, let's say, laptops. What are the raw materials that you expect to produce each laptop? What are the labor hours and uh, the total labor cost for each laptop that under normal circumstances? What are the variables uh, over it, the variable over it that you expect to incur under the normal operating conditions? Those are what we call the standards. Then at the end of the period, we measure actual performance. Right, we'll now measure actual performance. What was our actual performance at the end of the period? How much of the materials did we manage to use? How many, what was the quantity of the materials we used? How many labor hours did we spend on production? What was our total labor cost? What was our actual fixed overhead? That is the um, actual performance. Right, number three, we compare. Hey, can you hear me, my guys, my, my, my friends? Yeah, I think Maria is saying, saying that they cannot hear there. Yes, I can hear you, Eugene. Yes. So I think it's their problem there. So I think Maria should sort out the um, audio, something like that. Right, then we compare standards, actual performance. That way now standard costing comes in. We will now be saying, okay, we had planned on number one. So we're, we're comparing number one to number two. What was our plan and what actually happened? At that time, we're going to note variances so, or deviations from expected performance. Right, then the last step would be Take corrective measures. Improve our performance in future. Right. So our focus uh, on this topic would be the comparing of the standards to the actual. That means our expectations and what we actually did. So I hope by now you have already read on the formulas that I gave you. There are some formulas that I gave you. And uh, in this to um, at this level. They expect you to calculate the variance. After calculating the variance, they expect you to give possible reasons why uh, there might be that variance can exist. So you should also be able to explain the reasons why maybe, for example, there can be a price variance. The price that we buy our materials, can it, how, why can it be different to the planned price? So you should know that, okay, we can change the supplier. Or maybe we took advantage of bulky discounts, then we of the price went down or we identified a better supplier after the budget after setting the standards then we identified a better supplier or maybe the market maybe pushed up prices after the budget or reduced the prices after the budget all those things you should also be able to explain uh, so you should be able to calculate the variance explain what it means and possibly give uh, reasons why that variance can be there so our variances, we should be able to calculate material variances, labor variances, overhead variances. We should be able to calculate them. Sales variances. So you check the document that I sent, 
and uh, some more that are not on that document, which we are going to do uh, on this topic. Right. So now uh, let's look at our um, questions. I'll start from the first one. We are not going to do all of them. We'll be doing part parts of the questions. Uh, I'll start from the question one. Right. A delicious cereals private limited is a medium sized company that produces and sells two types of cereals. So I'll explain the, the variances through questions, the, the different variances. Right, corn cereals and, and whole wheat cereal to all major retailers. Each of the two types of cereals are sold to retailers in units of one kg per box. The company operates from Centurion area with most of its clients situated in and around Gauteng province. DC makes use of an absorption cost system and all its inventory items are valued using first in, first out. Right. Well, we know that the, our variance is at this level. They don't, they, when, when they ask you to calculate variance, they don't usually ask you to take into account the effect of opening and closing inventories. So you'd find that whenever they ask you variances, they would usually tell you to assume that there are no uh, inventories, either opening or closing. That's number one. Then uh, number two, there are some, we, Eugene? About absorption costing, there will be uh, some variants. Uh, Eugene, can you, yes. can you repeat what you've just said now? Sorry, I didn't hear. About what? The one that you said is the first step. I didn't say first step. I didn't say first step. I, I'm using maybe a, another word, step. But that, that's just why said... I wanted to understand the part that you are talking about. Because I was describing the scenario on this question. But you said something about the first part. I don't know what was, you were saying. We're talking about closing and opening inventory, Jim. Okay, I was saying, okay, when I was talking about closing and opening inventory, I was saying in your exams, they don't normally ask you to deal with situations whereby the business keeps inventory. So you would find that on your questions, they always tell you that ignore inventories on your questions. They don't normally ask you, uh, Variances whereby their inventory is held, right? So that's why we will not be uh, we will not be mainly dealing with um, inventories, right? Then the issue about absorption and uh, direct costing, there will be some variances, not all, that would differ depending on whether, like for example, material variances, labor variances, they don't change. Whether you are using absorption or you are using uh, direct costing, but there will be some sales variances, some uh, overhead variances that would differ depending on whether you are using direct or absorption costing. Amanda? Yes, Eugene, sorry. Someone is asking to be let in in the group. I think they were not appearing here. Just appeared now. Right. Okay, okay thank you so much, Amanda. Right. Uh, so I was saying uh, the main difference is uh, when it comes to absorption or direct costing, there is, I think, one, uh, there, will, there will be some sales variances. Then there will also be some overhead variances that will differ. But uh, normally, uh, the direct, the variable uh, cost variances, they are usually the same, whether you are using absorption or direct costing but you will see the differences as we go. Right. So on this part, I'm not going to look at everything here. I'm only going to focus on what I want to focus on. So on this first question, I'm only going to focus on part E. I'm only going to focus on part E. Right. First of all, they want the sales price variance for the whole wheat cereal. You should be very careful in your tests or in your exams because you might find that the organization can have two or more products but on your variance they can ask for one product or they can ask for all products so make sure that you check is the question asking for all products or the question is asking for some of the products so that you don't waste your time doing something that is irrelevant or which will not add marks to your question. Right. So we want the sales price variance. 
I'll explain about the sales price variance. Right. Sales price variance. Right. Our sales price variance, my friends, what I'm going to discuss now is not about the question. It's in general. Right. Uh, so whatever I will be writing for now, I will tell you when, we are, when I'm answering the question. Right now, I'm not answering the question. I'm just discussing the sales price variance. Right. Uh, this is a variance that arises. due to the budgeted selling price. Being different. To the actual selling price. There are various reasons uh, why your, your selling price can be different to the budget. You might find that there can be too much competition and you end up reducing the price. Or you can have promotions. I think you see ShopRite when they uh, do this thing that if you go with an extra savings card, the price is so much. But you might find that in the budget, the price was the normal price. Or it can be maybe because of inflation, which was beyond expectations. Prices can also go up we were expecting to sell it 100 rand, but we ended up selling it 120. Maybe we improved the quality of the product. So there are various reasons why uh, there can be a sales price variance. So it arises because of the difference between the budgeted selling price and the actual selling price. Right, our formula, it's actual selling price minus a budgeted or standard selling price. Multiply by actual quantity sold. So you have to be very careful. You multiply by actual quantity sold. Why? Because there can only be a variance on the actual quantity, not the necessarily the budgeted quantity. Because if we budgeted 2,000 to sell 2,000 and we only sold 1,500, the variance can only be on the 1,500 that was actually sold. Because the other 500, we didn't sell them. So we can't talk about the price variance. So this is the formula for calculating our selling sales price variance. But sometimes you'd find that in some uh, exams, they will talk about the sales margin price variance. Uh, normally in that instance, would you take the actual margin or actual gross profit minus the budgeted gross profit, which will be the sales minus the cost. Right. Uh, so normally you'd find that the answers will be the same. Right. Our actual selling price, so we have to go back and uh, get the actual selling price of WC. We need the actual selling price, budgeted selling price, and also the actual quantity sold of WC. Right. If we check here, WC. This is the budgeted and actual results. All right. uh, our sales, we can get them on our sales information, which are on note number one. The budgeted annual sales volumes were 10,000 and 50,000 for CC and WC respectively. The actual annual sales volumes were the same as the budgeted annual sales volumes. So that means the WC that we're looking for, the actual sales were 50,000. The actual sales were 50,000, we now have them because we're told that the actual sales were the same as the budget itself. Remember, we're dealing with a WC. So that means, yes, actual sales volume is actual uh, quantity sold. That's one and the same thing. Right. So it's uh, 50,000, the quantity sold. Right. So we now know the quantity sold. Selling prices were budgeted at 30 rand per unit, 30 rand per unit of CC and 35 rand per unit of WC. The budgeted price, we now know it, is 35. Then throughout the year, 
CC units were sold at its respective valid selling price, and WC, the one that we are looking for, was sold at 38. So our planned price was 35, but we sold at 38, and we sold these 50,000 units. So to get our variance, we'll get the 38. minus the 35 multiplied by the actual unit sold, which is the 50,000. Right, what do we get? One fifty thousand. So a, your variance is you are supposed to state whether it's variable or it's unfavorable, right? How do you determine whether it's favorable or unfavorable? If we've got a positive um, amount, right. then it's favorable. If favorable. it's a negative, unfavorable. Yes, that's correct. Favorable variances have a positive impact. Polo and allegedly assisted murderer and racist terrorist escape from the Mangawu. Impact on profits. That means uh, there is out in an increase in profits. Like in this case, a selling our products at 38 instead of the planned 35 would increase our profits by three rand per unit. Then unfavorable variances. Result in a decrease in profits. A, and it's also called adverse. So you can use adverse or unfavorable, but they recommend that if you decide to use unfavorable throughout the exam, use unfavorable, that is the U. If you decide to use adverse throughout the exam, use adverse, that is the A. So A and U can be used interchangeably. A for adverse, U for unfavorable. It's one and the same thing. Eugene? Yes. Let's say, for instance, uh, uh, you are busy writing your exam and then you forget to write that F uh, for favorable or U for unfavorable. Be loss of marks. Do th oh, so do, do you lose marks or do you get do you get a mark or what? Yes, do they you look get at for that the other F? Part. You, you definitely get for the other part, but you lose for the other part. Oh, okay. If it's one mark, you get half a mark. All variances should be described, whether they are favorable or unfavorable. Always. Mr. Eugene. Yes, my boss. There where you say actual selling price minus budgeted selling price, um, does it matter if you switch it around? As long as, like, I, I, I urge you to use this way because it will help you interpret. Because the other way around, if you get a negative answer, it will be favorable. But it's still okay. You will not be punished for that. But the oh, way the I... You would find that even uh, the way that I will structure some formulas is different from what you have in your books. Why? Because in your books, they sometimes put a formula in a way that if you get a negative answer, it's favorable. But I would prefer a way of the formula whereby when your answer is positive, you know it's favorable. Oh. Because even if you interchange, they will not, you will not get it wrong. Yes. The, answer, the, the, the question will be on the interpretation then. Yes, yes. Because as long no. as uh, you put it budgeted selling price minus actual, but at the end of the day, you write F. That means you know how to interpret it. That's fine. Oh, okay. No. But the disadvantage is when you have pressures in the exam, if you say 35 minus 38, you get a negative answer. It's highly likely that you write unfavorable. Okay. So that's why I suggest that it's rather better you just use it uh, this way. Right. Possible reasons. Inflation. Shortages of products on the market. Which push up prices. 
these are some, those are not all. Improved quality. Right, again, there's another uh, reason that you should all, you can use for any variance. Unrealistic budgets. So this reason can work for any variance. So if you know that you don't have a reason, you are stuck, just write unrealistic budget. Because it can work for any variance. These are a, some of the reasons. You can even talk about getting better contracts, which were not budgeted for, a, or maybe exporting rather than selling locally, which resulted um, in selling at um, uh, in foreign currency and uh, with the rand dropping, your price went up. All those things can, as long as it can explain. What you should know is that your explanation should be in line with the um, variance that you got. So if you get a favorable, don't explain things that are in support of an unfavorable. Please, for this question, they didn't ask you to give possible reasons. I'm just giving possible reasons, but they were not asked. When they just say calculate, just calculate, don't give reasons. Like in this question, they didn't want reasons. You were not supposed to put reasons. So you only put reasons if they ask for the reasons. I think when you wrote a test, you saw one of the questions, they didn't even ask for calculation. They said, give the form, how do we calculate? They didn't even ask you to calculate. Right. A, normally, when I give you the possible reasons for a favorable, the opposite side, gives you the reasons for an unfavorable variance. We can have a lot of competition. There can be too much. There can be a glut of a production which pushes prices down. Poor quality products. There can be discounts offered, offered to customers. Unrealistic budgets can also work there. Right. Any question there? Right. I'll go to the direct material with, with usage variance. Direct material with usage variance. Right. A, this arises because the raw material quantity used, quantities used in production were different from the standard or expected usage. Right, if from your experience, you can research and find out that maybe for each desk, we need two square meters of wood. So you already know when you're doing your budget that, okay, we're going to produce 30,000 desks and each requires two square meters. So we'd need 60,000 square meters of wood. But then after producing those 30,000, you find that you use uh, different uh, quantities. It can be due to sabotage. It can even be due to theft of materials by your employees. It can be, it, there can be an improvement whereby you can use less because of experience. It can be due to machinery. If, machina, if you buy new machinery, that may resu result in less wastage and better productivity. The machinery, if it's old, it can result in more wastage. All right, so all those reasons can be used to uh, calculate this. All right, the variance is the standard quantity. That is the expected quantity to be used minus actual quantity. Quantity used. Multiply by the standard price. We multiply by the standard price so that we don't incorporate the price variance here. So it's the standard quantity. So you have to go and check according to the budget, what was the uh, standard quantity that we expected to use. And you should know that standard quantity and budgeted quantity are different. Budgeted quantity, you'll be using the budgeted units. But when we say standard quantity, this is equal to the standard or budgeted quantity per unit.
multiplied by actual unit point. Whereas the budgeted quantity would multiply by the budgeted unit. But here on the standard quantity, you have to take the, what is my standard quantity per unit? Then I multiply by the actual units produced. Uh, so here we have to go and check the wheat. What was the wheat that they were expecting to, uh, to use? For the sake of time, I will be guiding you where the data is. But in the exam, you already know that, okay, I should go and find out where is it that they are talking about the usage of wheat. Right. Uh, Number one, it's also number one. The primary primary ingredient for CC is corn and for WC is wheat. So wheat is being used by WC. WC is the product using wheat. So maybe you can be writing those, uh, that's number one, so that when you are alone, you know where, where I was getting these things. Then if we go to number three, the wheat used in WC is bought in kilograms. The budgeted cost per kilogram was 1534. That's our standard cost. The budgeted cost is our standard cost, which is the 1534. Each unit of WC requires 0 0.5 kgs of wheat. The actual cost per kg was 1550, and the actual usage was 0 0.6. So they were expecting to use 0 0.5 kg per unit, but they used the 0 0.6. And we have to know, remember, we need the total quantity used. Right, the total, uh, we have to know our total production. Uh, the actual production, we need the actual production. Right. Uh, let me just write here. Yeah. The company had budgeted to produce 101,000 of CC and 51,000 of WC during the 2016 financial year. These budgeted units are equivalent to the company's annual production capacity. However, remember that we're interested in the actual units. The actual units produced were 100,500 for CC and 50,300 for WC. So it's 50,300 units that were actually produced why do we use units produced and not units sold? Because raw materials are used in the production process, not in the selling process. That's why we use the actual units produced, right? So they were expecting to use 0 0.5 kg per unit, but they used 0 0.6 kg per unit for these 50,300 units of WC. So we're going to say my standard quantity is equal to the 50,300 multiplied by 0 0.5. What do I get? Thank you. 25,150 kgs. So they were expecting to use 25,150 kgs. But instead, the actual quantity, they used 0 0.6 kgs per unit. We use got what? Eight thousand one hundred eight. So these are the kgs that they used instead of the twenty-five. And our standard price, remember, we have it. It's fifteen thirty-four, which we're given a year. Our standard price. Yeah, fifteen thirty-four. This is the budgeted price. Standard price is the, that budgeted price. So we're going to say. Twenty-five one fifty 
minus 3180 multiplied by 15 What do we get? Thank you so much. So that's a 77,160.20. If they say round off, you just round off to the nearest rand. And this is adverse. Why? Because uh, we used more materials than what we had uh, planned. So you can use an A or a U. Tobile. Yes, Eugene. Um, uh, yes, I, I thought you were, yes, I thought you were gonna use the same approach uh, as of the sales uh, price variance, where you would start with the actual quantity, uh, less the standard quantity, so that it's gonna be easy to follow. Because now it would be negative, and 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 now we are talking into um, uh, the usage. Then once it becomes negative because it's a cost, then that would mean we've incurred more. I mean, no, 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 not negative, but it's it's still gonna be positive. So if it's positive, that would mean we've incurred more because it's actually less the standard, which is what we budgeted for. Then if it's negative, then that would mean we've, we've incurred less, then it becomes favorable. I understand what you're saying, say. You can use that, but one thing that I know with students, as long as the answer is minus, they will take it as unfavorable. Then for revenue, it's better to start with the actual. Sorry, Jenny. So that when you get your formula like this, you know that as long as my answer is negative, that's an unfavorable. If my answer is positive, then it's favorable. Because the way that you are trying to show it, then at the end of the day, when your answer is positive, that means it has to be adverse. That might pose a challenge. Sharon. Uh, Eugene, I think you're not going to find that right. Uh, you said that the standard quantity is the same as the budgeted quantity, right? No, no, no. no I did. I said the standard quantity per unit. Oh, per unit. Yes, it's the same as the budgeted quantity, but the standard quantity and budgeted quantity are two different things. Oh, because okay. when you are calculating your standard quantity, we multiply by the actual units produced. Whereas yes. when we are calculating the budgeted quantity, we would use the budgeted uh, units produced. Okay. But per unit is the same. Standard and budgeted quantity per unit is the same. Any other questions? So uh, what I'm trying to say is that basically for revenue variances, for sales variances, start with the actual. For cost variances, start with the standard. That way, uh, as long as you get a positive answer, you know it's favorable. If you get a negative answer, you know that it's unfavorable. But as I said, you are allowed to do it the other way. So, Mr. Eugene, yes, sir. That A there, what does it what does it stand for? Adverse. Adverse. Yes. Or you can Meaning use a U. You can also use U. Oh, okay. U for unfavorable. Remember here, I said that you can use adverse, unfavorable or adverse. Oh, okay. It's one in the same thing. But as I said, if you're in the exam, don't use both. If you choose to use A, use A throughout for adverse variances. If you choose to use U, use U throughout. Palisa. I think it's going to be easier if we, we stick to favorable or unfavorable, because this one of A will confuse a lot of people. That's what I'm saying, that you use what you want when you are there. Because like, uh, you, you might be confused, but in your books, you get A, you get U. All so right. that's why I have to tell you about both. 
you might find that another maybe solution has got a u another solution that they will send to you has got an a so you have to know that both of the things are one and the same thing so you have to maintain a uh, what you what you are comfortable with Eugene? yes you know i'm lost the shame where I wish you can start over uh, explaining this part, the one that you've just did now. I was just seeing you moving, 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 but yeah, I'm just lost. I'm, I just want to let you know here, this part that you've just explained, I, no, I, I didn't hear most of the things. But I would ask my sister to you to stop us somewhere where you don't understand because there's a challenge to just start everything all over again. Understand? So okay, please, I'll... if you've got a problem, can you just stop? Maybe when I'm dealing with the standard quantity, stop me there. Okay. Rather than to just start everything else afresh. That sort of brings us brings us back. So I think I would try to suggest that when you have got a problem, try to make sure that you raise it there and there, rather than for us to start everything else. A standard price, a fifteen point eight four. Yes, it's fifteen point eight four. Okay, let me just try to help my sister, but please, next time we can't start everything all over again because we won't progress. So it's rather better that you tell us way right there when we have a problem so that we sort it out before we proceed. Right. Sorry, hey, Jane. You, yes. Can, uh, before you answer here, I just want to also add on that maybe you'll cover it all at once. Yes. Thank you. I just wanted to check isn't the, the, the answer for. For the direct material with its usage it's supposed to be negative the what the answer for the direct when you put when you put unfavorable that's already you are saying is negative oh okay so you, you don't you, have to put a minus or a plus your your description is the one that tells you what it is when you are doing variances but were you saying that you recommend for the for 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 material usage that we start with standard quantity minus actual uh, uh, for cost i would recommend that you start with the standard so that you know that whenever your answer is positive is negative that's unfavorable when it's positive it's favorable no tip thanks right my sister i would start here we said a direct material variance is a variance that arises because our raw materials we used in the production process were different from the raw materials that we had planned to use. So it's like when you are producing something, you expect, you, you know your standard that I should use so many raw materials. Now, as long as you use different raw materials, there is a variance there. Right. So then I said, you have to, for you to calculate it, you have to use the standard quantity minus the actual quantity times the standard price. That's our standard formula that you have to use to calculate your variance. Then I came here. Then I said to get your standard quantity is the standard quantity per unit. That is the, 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 the quantity of material that you expect to use per one unit times the actual units produced. So I had to go to the question paper to look for that standard quantity per unit that they were expecting to use and those actual units produced. And on the question paper, I came here then, that's when I saw that a WC requires 0.5 a kg of wheat. That is their expectation. So that each unit requires 0.5 kg. And the total units produced were given here. The actual units produced we are dealing with the WC, so don't don't look at a CC. We found that that is WC from this statement here. Was the the variance that they are asking is for wheat, and only WC uses wheat. That's why we are ignoring CC. Right. So the units produced were fifty thousand three hundred according to this statement, and they are expecting to use what zero point five kgs per unit. That's how we found the standard quantity that was required. That is 50,300 times 0 0.5, which is 25,150. So for producing 50,300 units of um, 
a WC, we were expecting to use uh, them to use 25,150 kgs of wheat. But what did they actually use? That is the, uh, the actual quantity. We were told that on the question, that the actual quantity A, right, where is it here? Uh, it was here. Actual usage was 0 0.6 kgs. Although they expected to use 0 0.5, they actually used 0 0.6 kgs per unit. So we then found our actual quantity to be 50,000 times 0 0.6, which is 30,108. So this is our standard quantity and our actual quantity. Then we replaced them in our formula here. Our standard price were given, our standard price is the budget price, which were given that the budgeted cost per kg of raw material is 1534. So the budgeted cost was 1534. So that's how we arrived at the 25,150, the standard quantity, then the 31,80, the actual quantity, and 1534, the standard price. Then that's how we calculated this. We found it to be negative. That's why we're saying it's unfavorable. Tovile. Yes, Eugene, I just want to check something here. Um, I'm just analyzing the question. So if we're to say direct uh, material variance, were to use uh, budgeted material uh, as to actual material use. That would be wrong because budgeted material use is budgeted quantities. Of which we don't do, we, when we are looking at our standard quantity, we don't use budgeted, the uh, budgeted, uh, budgeted units. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm saying on, on what I'm asking, uh, the difference is, is, is to the direct material usage variance, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm removing the, the usage part now to say direct material variance. No, no, the direct material variance will be, a, it will combine usage and price variance. Oh, okay. So that cannot be just direct material. This one, it's usage variant. Oh, okay. Because we've got direct material usage, direct material price. Then the two will make up the direct material variant. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, because our materials, there are two things that can cause a variant, the usage and the price. Then when they are combined, that's when they give the direct material variant. Okay, back to my sister. My sister, are you answered? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Possible reason for an adverse, uh, or maybe let me just use the U so that my, my, my brother can be okay there. But if you see an A, please, in your things, just, make, just know that is the same. A and U are the same. All right. Uh, if it's unfavorable quantity, the possible reasons can be a we can say production problems for example load shedding maybe uh, goods were being produced whilst uh, then load shedding happened which resulted in wastage they can be sabotage by employees use of inferior quality material you can go and check buy cheap material which will result in increased wastage theft of material there may be employees uh, stealing material they request more than what is required this can be some of the reasons then if it's favorable, you can talk about higher quality materials, new machinery that is a more efficient. Like for this one, you can even talk, the adverse, you can talk about use the machinery, old machinery that can result in more wastage. At unrealistic estimates as well. Yes, yes, yes. That one will always be there. Maybe our budget of 0 0.5 was too unrealistic. Right. Next, direct labor rate variant. And they said for the corn cereal only. So at your own time, you can do the other one.
right directly by it variant. This is a variant that arises because the rates at which direct labor was paid. was different from the budgeted, right? So uh, there can be collective bargaining after creating the budget, which will result in us paying more for labor than what we had budgeted. Maybe we had budgeted to pay them 100 per hour, then there was a strike, we ended up paying 110. Or maybe we use a different grade of labor. We, 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 we're expecting to use grade A that is paid at 50 rand an hour, but we use grade B, which is paid at 60 rand an hour. There can just be inflation, which, uh, which was beyond our expectations. And we had no option except to increase the salaries of employees. Or maybe we're expecting uh, the labor union to be tough on us, so we had budgeted for a 10% increase. But when we, went, we went to the negotiation table, we managed to negotiate a 7%. So anything that causes the rate variance to be different from our expectation, uh, that is the direct labor rate variance. Right, to calculate it, that will be the um, standard rate minus the actual rate that we paid. That is the direct labor rate multiplied by the actual direct labor hours. And note that we use clock hours, not wake hours. There's a difference between clock and wake hours. Clock hours are the hours that you are at work, including lunch and break and stuff like that. That is from the time that you enter the premises until you close. Whereas the Work hours are the hours that you are doing the actual work. So here we use the clock hours because we we pay both the clock and uh, the the work and the idle time. So uh, then then we have to know that we have to go to our question paper and check what was the standard rate that they were expecting to pay, and what was the actual rate that they finally paid, and what were the actual labor hours. And remember, we're dealing with CC only. Right. If we go back and check the budgeted and the actual rates, um, where they talk about labor, right? They talk about labor on number six. Right. On number six. So please just maybe if you have a note, just uh, write down that on direct labor, we're dealing with number six. So that when you are alone, you exactly know where we we were at where we're taking the figures you don't get confused again right the budgeted direct labor rate was 50 per hour that's their budgeted rate then the budgeted direct labor time to produce each unit is 12 minutes for cc and 10 minutes for wc when we're calculating the rate uh, direct labor rate variance we don't need the budgeted time we need the actual time that was good because a variance will be based on the actual time, right? Production employees can work interchangeably between the two products. The actual direct labor minutes, that's what we need now. The actual direct labor minutes per unit were equivalent to the budgeted direct labor minutes per unit for each of the two products. So the actual minutes were equal to the uh, budgeted. So that means it was 12 minutes for CC. Remember we're dealing with CC. So uh, they managed to use 12 minutes per each unit of CC. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the actual direct labor minutes were equivalent to the budget direct labor minutes per unit for each of the two products. The actual direct labor rate per hour was 5% higher than the budgeted labor rate. Remember the budgeted labor rate is fifth. Then the actual was 5% higher. So we can calculate our actual rate. Right. Our actual rate, we know that uh, the budget was 50 and the actual was 
5% higher. So we'll multiply by 1.05. And those who like the long way, you can space calculate the 5% and then you add. That will still be correct. What do we get? 5250. 52.50. So that means they actually paid it 5250. Then we also have to calculate the actual hours. We need the actual hours in our formula. Right. We told that the uh, budgeted hours per unit of 12 minutes. Remember, we're only dealing with CC according to the required. According to the required, we're dealing with CC only. But if you want, you can also do it on time WC. Right. It's 12 minutes per unit. And we were told that the actual were equivalent to the what? To the budgeted. So that means they were 12 per unit. And the number of units of CC, we know that the actual number of units on number three, that's where we have the actual units. For CC, they are 100,500. So we'd say 100,500, the number of units times the time per units, which is 12 minutes, then we divide by 60 to convert the minutes to hours. Considering that there is um there is um, a 60 minutes in an hour. What do we get? Twenty thousand one hundred. Is what? Twenty thousand one hundred. Thank you, sir. Twenty thousand one hundred hours. Thank you so much. So we can now go on our on our formula. Our standard rate that is the fifty that they were expecting to pay, minus the actual rate they then paid fifty two point fifty times the actual hours. Our actual hours are twenty one hundred. What do we get? Five zero two five zero. Unfavorable. So when you pay more, obviously that's bad for your profit. Right, possible reasons why elaborate can be a unfavorable. Inflation, which was rate adjustment. You were expecting 5% inflation, but inflation was 20%. And then you saw that we can't just leave our employees like that. Collective bargaining. done after budgeting period. So does overtime um, work affect the, the, the rate? Uh, it can uh, affect the rate also, uh, depending on uh, whether you had not incorporated it in the budget or not. But if it was scattered for in the budget, then it will not affect the, 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 the variance. But it can affect. So we can say unplanned. Unplanned over time. Because if it's planned, then it will have been cut out for that uh, maybe one in half rate to be there. So we can talk about unplanned uh, over time. Let's say maybe you just get a uh, big deals that you have not planned, and then you are forced to force your employees to work over time to negotiate with your employees to work over time, then that can be possible, say. Right. We can also uh, use of higher grade of labor where you were supposed to use unskilled labor, then uh, maybe to enhance quality, you used skilled labor who are paid a higher rate. Labor market conditions, maybe it's tight on the labor market. There is a scarcity of the skill that you are paying for the direct labor. So to attract better staff, you ended up increasing the price in order to attract better staff. Right, any questions? So if it's favorable, you go the other, the other direction. Uh, Mr. Eugene. Right. Yes, my boss. 
is it safe to actually um, determine the, the favorable or unfavorable answer just from that bracket there where it says um, standard rate minus actual rate? What, what I'm so saying is that if you put my formula it, like this, uh, then you yeah. know that as long as your answer is negative, it's unfavorable. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm saying, is it safe to make a judgment just from that bracket without having to multiply? Yes, yes, it's the... very, very safe because as long as you are paying more, but you will have to multiply so that you can see the actual value. The actual, yes, that's correct. But the judgment, you can do it from that bracket. Okay. I think almost all variances, you can just do the judgment just by looking at um, that first bracket. Because remember that the variance is coming from this bracket. So like here, you know that oh, I used more, 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 more a, a higher quantity of material. That's unfavorable. Even on the selling price, you can see that oh, my selling price was higher, so it's favorable. So that bracket is no, normally what is in that bracket is what usually determines whether it's favorable or unfavorable. The outside part only helps us to quantify the extent. All right. So that is very correct. That the inside bracket, that one is our key. For, for most of the variances, except some of the variances, which we shall see that they don't have that. Tobino. Yes, Eugene. Um, uh, just checking here, um, because now we are more preparing of exams, so we want to score marks. Even, even if um, you, you, you are wrong in terms of the calculation, but it's very important for, for us to link what you put on the calculation onto the reason so that Perfect. Can, yeah, so that you can interpret. Just wanted to confirm. That's very perfect. Because like, yeah. if you go to the reasons, let's say here your answer, you said unfavorable when it's favorable. But your reasons are in line with your answer. You can get your max score. Right. Next. The, the guys doing Mark 3761, don't be scared. When we hear someone saying, I'm preparing for exams, it's not you guys, it's 3701, they're writing this mark. Right. But I think you can also benefit from there. Was like, uh, I think I'll be doing some revision classes for them specifically, I think along the next week. Uh, if you are free, you can also attend, you can also benefit. I'll be informing the guys when I'll, I'll be having them. Right. Fixed manufacturing over its expenditure variance. Manufacturing overheads, expenditure variance. This one is a straightforward variance. It's just the difference between the budgeted fixed manufacturing overheads. Minus the actual. Right. So that would be our variance. So you just have to go and check what is our budgeted fixed manufacturing overheads and what is our actual. The difference is your variance. That's your expenditure variance. Right. Okay. Thank you, Leonora. A let me just do it for the sake of my other friends. Our whole answer is yeah. The budgeted annual fixed manufacturing overhead was 200, whilst the actual fixed manufacturing overhead for the 2016 financial year was 180. So the difference between those two, that's an expenditure variance. So it's 200,000 minus 180,000, which is equal to 20,000. Variable. We're expecting to spend 20, uh, 200,000, but we only spend 180. So that's favorable to us. Any questions? So actually, uh, 
the fixed manufacturing overhead. arises due to the budgeted fixed manufacturing overheads. Being different to the actual fixed manufacturing overheads. So as long as there's a difference between our budgeted and our actual, then we have a variance. Any questions? Right. So those were the variances on this. Uh, okay, let me just look at possible reasons. I didn't look at possible reasons there. Right, uh, the possible reasons that we can have uh, for a favorable fixed manufacturing overheads, a renegotiation of contracts. For example, rent. Right, service providers making lesser increases. Than expected. Remember that fixed overheads they come from a, a use of cheaper. I think. Thank you, my friends. The cheaper service providers were expecting to rent at a specific premises, but then along the way, when we started the year, we discovered that we could rent elsewhere at a cheaper price. Then we ended up. A, uh, in caring less, or maybe we're expecting to, uh, to uh, employ uh, some supervisors who are highly qualified at a higher cost, but only discovered that uh, inside with talent that could be able to do the same job at a lesser cost. So we ended up using our um, our inside, uh, yeah, uh, promoting our. Um, uh, inside employees and we charged them a lesser price. Then the opposite applies there. Right, any questions there? Right. Uh, very sorry for the delays that happened. I wanted to also push question two. So I would ask you to try question two, but I will do uh, the whole of question two in class. It has got some very, very, very important variances. So uh, I would like you to try question two, and then we'll uh, discuss when we meet uh, on how to do that. Then uh, my friends who are doing uh, Mark 3701, I think I'm going to organize a session during the weekend because I think there are still some topics that you need to do. But my focus during the weekend will be on uh, transfer pricing and performance management. For those who are doing a make 3761, I will tell you uh, whether it's optional or you should attend. I will tell you, I will inform you because I just want to check if it's too far away then I can leave it for the time that I'll do it with you. But if it's that topic is uh, in your next test, then I might force you also to attend. I will tell you, but I'll be doing it uh, uh, during the weekend. Leonora, that can also be uh, correct to say cancellation of some contracts. Uh, uh, Zubair, uh, whatever you are talking about there, it doesn't affect the budgeted uh, overhead expenditure variance. 
it will affect what we call the uh, volume variance or the capacity variance, which we shall do at a different stage. We shall also deal with it. So the expenditure variance is not affected by the labor minutes uh, or the machine hours, whatever, whatever the basis, the cost driver. It doesn't affect the expenditure variance. I think I, I, will, I will make sure that maybe when we meet next week, I will do some of the variances. Right, so my friends, this class will continue on Wednesday. This class will continue on Wednesday, not during the weekend. Weekend, I'm doing a, a completely different topic. I'm doing it for the sake of my friends who are writing a final exam this month. So I want to make sure that they also do that topic. So this month, this weekend's class will be based on performance management and transfer pricing. Standard costing will continue on Wednesday. Then uh, those who are doing Mark 361, I will tell you, I will first have to assess the things that you are covering in your next test. Then I'll be able to tell you whether I, I maybe I will do it you later on Wednesday or if I will do it later on Wednesday, I will tell you not to relax. But if you have to do it now, I would I will also ask you to attend. Chobil. Yes, Uchen. Um can, can I ask that um maybe on the papers that would be using on 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 the classes for for the weekend can you please share them as early as possible uh, so that we, we can also try to attempt ourselves so that when we get to the class maybe we might have questions that we have prepared uh, for the class thank you so much granted i will do that all right thanks Writing exam on Thursday. What is that exam? Are there exams this week? Oh, you're talking about next week. Okay, okay, okay. I'm talking about this week here. Also, oh, you mean you'll be preparing for that exam? Yeah, because because you also Amanda. Write okay. Amanda. Yes. Yes. Eugenia, just wanted to check what will you be covering on the weekend? Maybe five times just to attend. Even I said if performance it's management and transfer price. Pe performance management and transfer price. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm. Okay, thank you guys. Have a blessed uh, right, thanks. Oh, uh, have a blessed day. Okay, thanks. You too.